What we've covered previously allows us to write an equation for NOK. NOK is 3 times the number of nodes minus the number of restraints minus the number of constraints minus the number of reductions. We write NC, number of constraints, with the star to indicate that we have to be careful with this term since there can be exceptions in its use. Let's look at some examples. In the first example, we argued physically that it has two degrees of freedom. Vertical translation of the right-hand node and rotation of the right-hand node. Let's see how the equation works. We have one node and one node, that's two nodes, three restraints from the fixed end, one axial constraint, and no reductions. A reduction would mean that we chose not to count the rotation at that node. And indeed, this equation gives us n OK of 2. Let's look at the next example. In this example, we had a rotational degree of freedom at the center node and a rotational degree of freedom at the end node. So once again, we've chosen not to reduce this degree of freedom, so we put a zero in the last term. We have one, two, three nodes, three restraints here, two here, and one here for a total of six, an axial constraint in the left side and an axial constraint in the right side member for two, but this gives us a value of n OK of one, which isn't in agreement with the physical argument. Let's see what's going on here. And what's happening is this pin right here is already restraining the horizontal movement of that node. So whether or not there's an axial constraint in that member, that node still can't move. So we can't double count a constraint. If we change the number of constraints to one, we get the correct value. I'll give you two quick rules of thumb to help you determine this value of NC star. Now we always have to think about it, but these might help give you some guidance. In the first case, if all the members are aligned and both ends are fixed against translation, then we have to subtract one from the number of members. Exactly as in the example above, one of the constraints due to the restraint is going to be redundant with the constraint due to the axial rigidity of the member, and we can count at most one of those. The other case is if we have members meeting at an angle, and in this case, NC star is at most two as long as there are more than two such members. Let's look at the example below to get an idea of why that is. We'll consider the vertical member and we'll consider the diagonal member that I'm indicating here. Now the vertical member can move horizontally. The diagonal member can move diagonally as shown there, perpendicular to the member. Given those two constraints, this node is already prevented from moving. So whether or not I add another member here, I can't add another constraint. Those first two constraints were sufficient to fully fix the node. Let's move on to the next example. In this example, we had one degree of freedom, and we chose to reduce the degree of freedom at the far end. So right here, that's from the reduction at the far end. We have three nodes, one, one, and one, gives us a three times three there. We have three supports, two supports, and one support, that's six restraints. One axial constraint, we count this one, we don't count this one as we already discussed, and this gives us a value of one. In the last example, I'll note that there is a typo in the study guide, so make sure that you correct that. We previously argued physically that there is one degree of freedom, and that's the rotation of the left-hand node. These three degrees of freedom that I'm indicating right here at the center node are related to that rotation through the rigid body constraint. We've also chosen to reduce the degree of freedom at the right side here. Let's start our counting. The reduction of the degree of freedom at the right side is accounted for here. We have three nodes, one, one, and one. We have two restraints here and one here, which gives us a three in the second term. For our constraints, we have a rigid body constraint on this member, which counts as three constraints, and an axial constraint on this member, which counts as one more. It gives us a total of four constraints. I get an NOK of one, which matches the figure.